it is well and truly winter. My hair gets bigger <laughs> and the, the more moisture is in the air. Now, this week's video is a little bit different. I am putting the garden to bed. Um, I'm going to cut back the dahlias. I got some mulch to stick on top. I have some bulbs I want to stick into the lawn because somebody influenced me in the comments section on one of the recent garden videos, but I do have some sad news for my regular viewers and this is not going to be an easy video to film. My regular viewers will notice that someone is absent from the garden and later in the video I'm going to have the chats about that. And I'm also going to put in a trigger warning if you do not want to be upset today then you can click off at the end and that's totally fine. It's more so for my regular viewers. First thing I want to do is plant some bulbs in the lawn but I'm going to show you around the garden because it's actually looking quite well for December. Um, Lots of the trees have lost their leaves. I did cut the grass, I think, one last time. I know I keep saying one last time, one last time, but I did cut it and it's looking tidy and there hasn't been more leaves falling. So I think I might be out of the woods with the leaves for a while. Not too bad. I gave the garden the grass one last cut and if we look up at the leaves, they have gone. The trees are now very wintry and most of the leaves have fallen and any remaining leaves Oh, that winter sun is beautiful, isn't it? I think they're going to fall the other side. Not much left happening with the dahlias. You'll see some of the back are starting to kind of go black. There hasn't been much frost though. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of this back today. And I got some horse manure mulch from Brenda, <laughs> who works for my publisher. And I think I'm going to just cut all this back. And for anyone who doesn't know, dahlias are not frost hardy but I'm going to leave them in the bed with loads of mulch and see how they get on. And then I have other tubers in the greenhouse that were in pots. Now, Brussels sprout update, absolutely huge. So there will definitely, hang on, let me zoom. There will definitely be a good yield of Brussels sprouts for Christmas. This is also a bit of a riot. So I think what I'm going to do is the zinnias have gone to seed. So I think I'm going to collect some of the seeds on that one and then yeah i think i'm just gonna cut back all the snapdragons and you might notice there is some bulbs some spring bulbs starting to shoot up which we like to see so if i could tidy these two beds and put them to bed i will be very happy and over at this side not much is kind of happening verbena is starting to get a little bit floppy magnolia has lost its leaves they went like a lovely color they were quite orangey and fell still have some of karen's um i can't think of the name i can't think of the name are they called something i susan sir anyway they've had a great run this little pink flower has started to come up. I got this one off my neighbour and not much was happening and now it's kind of growing. Pond is doing well, geranium, yeah, tipping away. So my plan is, my plan is to put some crocus in the lawn, kind of around here. That way in spring, I can still cut the grass like here and it'll look tidy, but I can have some crocus, snowdrops, the last of my bulbs and almost do like a, a meadow effect. I don't know, let's have a little experiment. If it doesn't look nice, I can just take the bulbs out after spring when they're done and use them somewhere else in the garden. But I thought it might be nice to pop them here. I love how bulbs in a garden give you like a lovely cottagey effect. Not much happening over here in the greenhouse. I've just put some of the like geraniums and stuff inside so that the frost or the cold won't get them. A couple of snapdragons down there in that bucket doing well, but I could kind of do it rearranging some buckets and putting a few bits in. The woodland corner, no sign of any bulbs poking up just yet, but it is quite soon. I did only plant them, I think like two videos ago. So no signs of any action just yet, but I'm excited to see what's gonna look like in spring. So here is my magic gardening tool. So I did have a handheld bulb planter, which you would have seen in a video. And I actually gave that to Karen <laughs> because I was after buying this. <laughs> This is like one that goes into the lawn. Now, something I've noticed is the ground is very sludgy. Be easy to use because the ground you can see is gone kind of mucky and soft. So this should make my job much easier.
So my romantic idea of having crocus coming up through the lawn is much harder than I thought. I think it's a combination of my bulb planter and my soil. I remembered that I don't have grey soil. <laughs> There's like stones and rocks, so this is what I have to do. Hang on. I dig it in. Can't really get it in deep enough, that's what she said. And then I have to twist it. Lift it, and then I can't, I use the pressy thing to plop the soil back in, but I have to wiggle it, catch the grass to pull it down, it's not ideal. So, I just thought I'd share that if you are thinking of putting the bulbs in the soil. It's not as easy as Monty Don made it look, so, but I'll play one, I'll play one. I found a penny. I found treasure. Okay, what's the year? Hmm, interesting. Oh, 10 cent. <laughs> I'm flush. 2003. I also found some plastic. See, my soil. I don't know what they did when they built. What's making me curious is, I think my house was built in 1999 and this 10 penny was buried in the soil a long way. <sighs> plastic. Oh, it looks like a yogurt lid. Anyway, and a cool pop. Looks like a cool pop wrapper. But 2003 is this penny. <laughs> Little bit of treasure, you never know what you're gonna find in my soil. I don't know if my mic can pick up on the robin singing. There's a robin after being darting around and I think he thinks I'm after unearthing lots of worms. When they see Brenda's famous compost on this bed, <laughs> I think the little birds are going to be all over this. So I've cut back um, everything and also, can you see? Look at all the spring bulbs shooting up in this. And I didn't even notice because the snapdragons we're all starting to kind of go around this, so I'm glad I tidied this up. I didn't put any mulch on this. I'll mulch this in spring and it'll be nice and tidy. So I use Brenda's compost. Um, it's like a kind of farmyard manure, I suppose you would call it, but it's her own and like it doesn't smell because it's like well rotted down and she has horses as well. So <laughs> we've got some good compost. What I might do because dahlias don't like to get, you know, too soggy and they don't like the cold, I'm I might just put a layer of bark over this for winter and then that'll give us some extra insulation just in case we do get you know really bad frost maybe after Christmas it's still quite mild um, I think two weeks ago there was a bit of a chill but like nothing too nothing too bad still a bit mild can you tell it's humid out <laughs> or moisture in the air it's not humid it's just moisture in the air I look like cousin it I don't know if you can hear the birds but they are getting ready to dive in this flower bed to get all the worms. So I think I'm just going to let everything die now for the winter. So just let everything go to seed, anything that is left. Packet of tulips left. So I've any of the bulbs I bought, I got them in. We just have one packet left and I think I might pop them in a pot. But other than that, I don't have any massive things that I need to do 
over winter. If I do anything in the garden that's like fun over winter, I will pop it into a video, but the weekly garden videos have sadly now come to a close. Now, for my regular viewers, I'm going to decide to make a cup of tea and we're going to have the chats, but like I said earlier, trigger warning, it might be upsetting for some because I do have some sad news and we need tea. We need maybe something stronger than tea, but tea is what I'll have. If you're wearing mascara, I suggest you remove it because it is going to be on your cheeks in a minute. Now before I have the chats, I know that there is much bigger things going on in the world and that this time of year is already hard for a lot of people just got a little bit extra harder for me <laughs> we're using our sleeves as tissues let me grab a tissue <laughs> so sadly a week ago blondie got sick i can't even say the words if you are a regular on my channel you will adore if blondie is not in a video for a, a week people are always like where's blondie blondie was not in the video today how is she this was so sudden and the thought crossed my mind, will I just go out and get another white cat and say nothing? <laughs> because I didn't want to do this. Let's start at the beginning. So a week ago, um, I brought Blandy to the vet because her breathing was only slightly abnormal. And just as a precaution, I said, I'll bring her a normal cat's breathing rate, resting rate is between 20 and 30 breaths a minute and Blondie's was slightly elevated to around you know 40 45 and she was actually in great form but my god so Blondie had been in the vets this year for her you know her boosters her checkup and her annual kind of thing and grand her um blood tests perfect liver function thyroid amazing so she went in with some elevated breathing and on the saturday um they couldn't do a scan that day um because the emergency vet on that day wasn't available so they gave her an injection and they were like you know what they said come back in a couple of hours they kept her under obs and she was fine she came home then the Sunday morning, her breathing was much worse and I brought her straight down to the vet again. And they were able to do a scan, which showed she had, showed, oh, I can't say it. The scan showed up that she had um, heart disease, but her lungs had also filled with fluid because that's what happened when, when the heart fails. And also anyone who, anyone who's had a cat with heart disease will know that it comes on quite sudden. And the vet was telling me that, you know, unfortunately it's when they have these little symptoms is when you notice up until then it can be a silent kind of thing, which it was in Blondie's case. So the good news was um, the day Blondie went into the vet, they cleared the fluid off her lungs. She responded to heart medication. She was on two heart tablets. So I had a bit of hope and she started to do really well. And I had a week with Blondie um, where I was able to actually, I canceled a couple of things I was supposed to have on that week and I was able to work from home. And she had a great week. She was responding to her heart medicine, her lung um, breathing returned to normal. She was having the zoomies around the kitchen, she was in the garden, she, I had hope. But sadly, oh God. Sadly on the Saturday, so a week after she had originally been in, she was great that morning. Um, she was booked in to go in for a big scan on her heart the, um, this week actually. And I just, I heard, um, I heard a bang. Blondie was on the stairs and she must have been trying to come down and a claw had developed and she lost the use of her back legs. So straight away, thankfully I am 10 minutes from the vet and I was home and me and Blondie went straight to the vet and within, from the moment of that happening, I'd say max 20 minutes she was in the vet on pain relief. I'm so sorry but you, Jesus, you you don't have no heart to not cry. There was no coming back from that, what had happened. And the vet said that when it's, you know, heart disease and heart failure and things like that, that um, that is what happened. At first I thought, like, did Blondie fall or something? It was totally out of character. And she said that clots form and it can cause paralysis. And so not long after it happened, I did have to say uh, goodbye. 
the vets were absolutely amazing. The week they checked in every day when she went in as an emergency originally, like she just got the best care. And then anyone like a little background on Blondie, um, her real age is between 10 and 11. So I still classed her as young. When Pepsi passed away in 2021, Pepsi's real age was 16. She lived with me for eight of her 16 years. And I could accept that. Though I could accept Pepsi passing from old age. And I was like, okay. But this, this is just out of the blue. So pause this video, go get your pet and hug them. So yeah, Blondie was a rescue. And when I originally got her, she was in bad condition. And it took me a good year to get her to be the sassy Blondie we know. Um, she was always for her whole life on, you know, special food for her stomach. When I first got her, she, you know, had to be new urge. She was very underweight, things like that. The vet kind of said, could have been a genetic thing, um, could have been a stress thing. Maybe she died of a broken heart from Pepsi, I don't know. The two of them let on like they didn't like each other, but maybe all of the changes of, you know, Pepsi not being in the house, then I was working from home, maybe I stressed her, I, I, don't, I don't know. Could have been genetic as well. First of all, I'm gonna say thanks in advance because our community is deadly. And even when Pepsi passed, I mentioned like lovely messages. And I'm sorry in advance if I'm not able to reply to them all because I know I'll be balling <laughs> again. So it kind of throws a spanner in the work. Well, it doesn't really, but it's December, it's YouTube. Everyone wants loads of videos and vlogmas and stuff. And I was gonna do, you know, some extra videos. I was gonna end the Sunday Garden video anyway. I had said that in a previous one. And um, the Sunday Garden video will come back probably around about March time when more things kind of start happening in the garden. Um, and if I do anything in the garden project wise, if I build anything, I'll have it as a Thursday video. Um, in January or February. So I think for December, I was gonna just do like an extra video on the Sunday. Um, so Sunday and Thursday in December, and then I always take I always take a break um, for Christmas. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. Now Blondie is actually in Thursday's video uh, for a little bit because I filmed it. She was actually all right when I filmed that video. Um, so if you do see her popping up, that unfortunately will be the last video where she pokes about. So now I have no pets for the first time in my existence on this planet because I was born into a house full of pets and I don't think I've ever been without one. I definitely need some time though because Oh, the heartbreaks, but I would do it all, I would do it all over again. Decade of love with Queen Bee. We've lost another queen this year, Queen Bee. Um, that decade of love outweighs this momentary, momentary, momentarily, momentary, momentary, this heartache. So I'm absolutely so sorry. I had like a fault, I thought this video, I would just say lads, update, Blondie hasn't been well. But she's grand and literally like that, gone. So I'm sorry if I have just ruined your Sunday evening. <laughs> but I know a lot of people are a massive fan of her and rightly so because she was an absolute legend. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, I did share uh, when Blondie wasn't well on my stories. I don't know what it is about Instagram. This time of year people are sharing their like, you know, festivities and the highlight reel and I don't wanna come on sobbing saying Blondie died. I will make a cute little reel um, to celebrate her memory. But it's gonna take me a minute to do that. So yeah, it's been just sudden. It's been a shit week. <laughs> She's me language. I just wanted to make this video and let you know um, just for in the future if people are like, oh, where's Blondie? I haven't seen her. This is, you know, what happened, but what an angel. And I think it's safe to say we're all gonna miss her. So I will see you in Thursday's video. And that's another thing I want to say, if uh, obviously on Thursday's video, I wasn't heartbroken. <laughs> so I didn't want to be like, oh my cat died. Here's a lovely video of me making this cabinet. You know what I mean? You don't want to be an asshole like that. And uh, also the same, with Instagram, I'm gonna share the news in this video, but I don't want it to look like, oh, clickbait, 
getting the views, but I just don't want to go on Instagram. Because when you're not in the form for it, it's just not. No, I think you just have to be in the form for our whole Instagram, don't you? It's, I always say, when you're not in good form, it's not the place to be. Yeah, I might have a Sunday video next week. It won't be garden related. I was gonna go, I wanted to go to a cute you know, Christmas market and stuff and maybe that will be good to do. Um, actually, this week has been a nice distraction because I was out signing books and it was great to kind of be out and see people and um, I kind of just ploughed on with bits that I had to do this week. So that has been like a nice distraction. Um, so maybe I will go to a cute Christmas market and um, do some festive content. But uh, yeah, if if I look a little sad, that's why. So I'll end it on that. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Here's to the community. All for one, one for all. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Not even gonna say cheeky thumbs up because she just nah. I can't fake it. <laughs> if I'm under the weather, I can't fake it. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't want to just plow on and pretend like nothing happened. Although going out and getting another white cat was was definitely in my thoughts. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in the next video.